Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at wiring push buttons and selector switch to uh, click PLC. Now from before, we actually wired up our assembly and testing of our push buttons and switches. Now we'll be actually wiring this up. Now detailed information in, contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. So if we are actually to look at our hardware that we had last time, you will see here's our assembly of our start stop and our handoff auto selector switch. And we have this wired up into our click PLC here, which was also wired up to our stack light that we will be controlling. So if I open up this uh, box and we'll take a look at the wiring what you will see is that we have a brown wire and we've common a brown wire to each of our devices and there's six in total this is my uh, start going to my stop then going to my auto then to my hand which is this uh, top selector switch here then we have our, our stop um, LED light and then our stop LED light and then back to the uh, zero volt of our DC power supply back here. Then our individual six wires then go to the corresponding input of our PLC. So the first thing here is we have our, our start which is going to C or X1, then we have a stop going to X2, then we have our hand, um, which is going to X3, and then auto X4. So that is what we have. And so we have six, six devices basically, and six wires going back into our quick PLC. And our common, again, like we said, we came back and we wired this back into our uh, zero volts. So we'll just reassemble that. Tuck all the wires back in. And the last thing we'll take a look, or the next thing we'll take a look at is basically our common for input point is actually going from uh, C1 or common point one and that actually is jumpered around and then goes back to our plus 24 volt DC. So looking at our wiring diagram here, our PLC input is sitting at plus 24 volt. So that means we are sourcing our inputs. And then our, again, on our output side, our common is sitting at plus 24 volt. So that means we're sourcing our outputs as well. So our load appears between our zero volt, 24, or zero volt DC and the, um, the actual physical output of our component or input, depending on which one it is. So the first thing we should do is actually, uh, we'll call up our click programming software and currently we're, we are online. We are online with our Ethernet connection located right here. And we have this actually in the stop mode. So what we can do is actually test our inputs. And you can see here, we have one input showing on our PLC, which is right here. It's X2, which is our stop. So if we hit the stop, we should see it going off, which we do. Now it's difficult to see um, because of all the wiring that's in the way, or this could be in a panel. So the software itself, if we go under monitor and you go to system monitor, it will pull up a representation of the actual um, PLC. So if I were to hit the stop, you can see my X2, because it's wired up 
uh, it's not normally closed going in. So if I do not touch it, it provides a signal to the PLC. Then I can hit start and to start, you can see it works. So that's X1. And then on my hand off auto, I hit hand and you can see X3 is now energized. And then I'll select that and go to X or um, auto and then auto X4 is energized. If I turn it off, then both of them are off. So that looks like it's wired correctly. Now let's uh, put that into run mode. And we'll just close this now for now, the system. So that's a very handy tool if you can't see anything now. And you'll notice here that Y6 is on right now, which is my stop indication light. So that's my LED lamp for my stop. So that looks like it's wired as well. So the other one, other one to look at is my start which is Y5. So again, let's close that and let's look at the program. So in the program here, you'll see that if we hit the start button and the stop button is not selected and we are in auto, we will turn on our start lamp and our start lamp actually seals that in and allows the system to operate. When our start lamp operates, we call up that same drum mechanism that we uh, looked at before ESS in our stack light uh, program. So then our stop button will actually reset our stack light and it will also reset this uh, starting. So as soon as I hit the stop, it will reset that sequence that we've started. Then we also have a jog. So as we're starting, you'll see that um, we can skip the steps in our drum sequence when we hit the uh, start again and it will just skip over and we can uh, further go through our sequence quicker. Then our outputs from our stack light, we have one. And then what we've done is we said, well, if we're in the selector switch hand and we hit the starts button, then the lamp will turn on. And we did this for all four of our stack light lamps. And then we have our end statement. So that's the entire program. So what we can do is now test that out. So the first thing we can do is we can see we're off and I hit start, hit stop, nothing happens. Now what we can do is we can go to hand. And remember in hand, um, as soon as we hit the start, we should turn on all the lights, which is exactly what happens. So that seems to be working well. And I can see that down in my program. All the lights are indicating they're on then off. And then lastly, what we can do is we can turn this into auto. And in auto, when we hit the start, we should now start our sequence and we should be able to see this. It seals that latch in and you can see now our drum is going through our sequence. And with the drum sequence going, we can hit the start push button and it will advance that sequence as well. Let's try that out. which looks like that works quite well. And then I let go of the start. The jog will not will no longer control that sequence and it will go on back to the original routine. And if we hit the stop, two things will happen. First of all, our um, sequence will stop operating and the stop push button um, will also trigger the reset. So then it's thought it'll reset my drum back to step one again. So let's do that. There's my stop. And that's exactly what happened. You see now we're back at step number one. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it.
If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the description button so you can get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that little bell beside your subscription so that you actually get the notifications when the video is released. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.